is a collection of the most unique aircraft in the world. The planes here are used in the research and development of future air travel. Tonight, we're going to show you the X-22, probably the most unusual airplane you've ever seen. Inside this hangar at Buffalo's Calspan Research Center sets the world's most unusual airplane, the X-22. Like any typical plane, the X-22 flies. That's where the similarity ends. The 22 is a VTOL, Vertical Takeoff and Landing Aircraft. This bizarre looking mass of machinery is an everyday sight for X-22 test director Jack Beelman. He's been with the project since 1962. We are all you know, really truly pressing the frontiers of, of, uh, of flight and science for this particular mode of aircraft uh, to travel from city center to city center without uh, having a great amount of acreage devoted to airports. Does the X-22 have any little quirks? <laughs> I feel that it has a bag of quirks that I'll never live long enough to know. The X-22 has no uh, auto-rotational capability like a helicopter, and nor does it have a gliding capability like a uh, conventional airplane. So uh, any, uh, any, you know, really s serious or major system failure would uh, would uh, lead to a uh, uh, fairly abrupt landing, to put it mildly. Because of the risks involved in flying a plane that cannot glide, safety precautions are of supreme importance in the X-22 project. Radio telemetry equipment monitors every function of the airborne X-22 and sends it from the plane to a mobile control van. 137 channels of information are sent to the van every instant. More than half of those channels contain safety information. But even the most sophisticated system is not foolproof. Telemetry dropout. What's going on with that damn thing? Yeah, that was telemetry problem. 521, uh, check the number four uh, oil uh, temperature and pressure. We cannot continue the operation because we can't monitor all the systems. So you brought it down? So we brought it down and, you know, boarded the flight. And that's a big frustration. So that's part of where the challenge comes from. For every hour we fly the X-22, we spend about 120 hours of mechanics time on maintenance of the airplane. It's a little like saying you come in every Monday morning and flew an hour flight, and then you spend all three guys would spend the rest of the week um, inspecting the airplane. A great deal of effort goes into preparation for a flight. It really usually starts a minimum of a couple of days ahead of time in terms of the detailed flight plan and the tests and notification of all the people involved. I can't think of any activity anymore, a team effort. I mean, we are totally dependent or crucially dependent on every single member of the team. It's that kind of teamwork that is helping CalSpan to make aviation history. Less than 10 years ago, Jack invented the world's first totally accurate airspeed indicator for use on the X-22. And CalSpan people have been leaders in the use of this futuristic looking landing scope called the HUD. By interpreting the symbols on the HUD's TV screen, the pilot can determine his exact position vertically and horizontally without even looking out the window. If visibility is good, the pilot can see the real world through the HUD's graphic display. Perhaps the X-22 team's greatest achievement is the Variable Stability In-Flight Simulator. In plain English, that means that the X-22 can be computer programmed to imitate other airplanes even planes that haven't been built yet. There's really no finite uh, limit to how many things we can do, how many airplanes we can simulate. I, I put it this way, you, you tell us what airplane you want to simulate, or someone else, give us the equations that represent it, and with, and, and with, those, with that information, we can make the X-22 cockpit and flight control system be just like that airplane, even if it hasn't been built yet. Some designs for future airplanes have a hard time getting off the drawing board, let alone off the ground.
They're unfit to fly. The X-22 computer has been programmed to imitate one of those unstable planes. Well, I took care of the altitude. Good girl. This pilot's assignment is to simulate a perfect landing by aligning all the symbols on the HUD screen. It's kind of like trying to play Space Invaders while someone else tries to bump your control stick. Over $40 million in 18 years have been devoted to the X-22. But until the government or a commercial manufacturer is willing to mass produce vertical takeoff and landing planes, none of us will be flying from downtown Buffalo to downtown Los Angeles. That does not discourage Jack Bielman and his associates at Calspan. They believe in the future. I mean, ultimately, there will be a day when, when I think uh, that will be the common type of airplane. We will have vertical takeoff and landing airplanes. It might be 100 years away. It wouldn't be very satisfying to any of us if we thought we were just playing a game or you know, spinning the wheels or, or generating information that nobody was really ever going to care about. We, we really think that you know, what we're doing is, is important and, and, and will be very useful uh, when, when the v day of VTOL airplanes comes. Jack says that present plans for the X-22 call for it to be used as an in-flight simulator for the next five or ten years.